What's up, everybody? It's your girl Chinchilla here for another episode of Cooking with Chinchilla. Um, I Yes, I am back in the kitchen. It's been about a month since I've been here. I took a couple weeks off. And then last week, we, as you saw, uh, we did Dracarys Pizza, Dracarys. I'm not sure if, exactly if I got it right. Um, but the great thing about this show is the stove isn't going to do the cooking. I'm going to do the cooking along with some limes and some salt. And I'm going to teach you guys today how to make ceviche. Um, just with the summer coming to an end, we really felt it here in the valley outside of LA is what they call it, the San Fernando Valley. It went up to 110 degrees and you could feel it inside the house. Uh, the AC was running, it was still 80 degrees inside our apartment. Um, and yeah, so with that coming to an end, I wanted to do something fresh and something different. Um, so today we're gonna be making shrimp and fish ceviche. So if you don't know how to make it, now's your day to learn. Um, I have some tostadas here because I like to eat my ceviche on top of a tostada. Or you can just use usual chips or just eat it by spoon or fork, however you like it. Um, these are toppings that I like to use. This is a guacamole salsa. Uh, and then this is the sour cream, the Mexican sour cream, which is, goes really good on top. But a lot of people just like Tabasco or Tapatio or whatever else. So you can do it however you like. So we're going to go over the ingredients here. I have a ton of limes, so the reason why I have a ton of limes is because the limes and the salt is going to do all the cooking. I have some tomatoes here, as you can see all of this, and sorry the lighting's bad. As you guys know, I was out on the street doing a street food with chinchilla, aka cooking with chinchilla at Dracarys Pizza, and I left my cord hanging out of the car, so I got to get a new cord for my light, so excuse the lighting today. Um, but here are the ingredients. I'm going to put it close so you guys can see. It's red onion, cilantro, cucumber, a lot of limes, uh, tomatoes, and jalapeno. Jalapeno is just going to give it that little kick. If you want to use serrano peppers or habanero, whatever your spiciness, your taste buds like, that's what you can use. And then I have some simple tilapia here. Um, it's very well priced and it's really good, usually farm raised. Um, you also have the fresh shrimp. Uh, you don't want to use a pre-cooked shrimp. That's just going to take away of the freshness flavor, freshness of the flavor. Um, so here we go. We got some medium raw shrimp. Um, and my best friend today, since I don't have a big cutting board, is going to be scissors. So this is going to do a lot of the cutting today for me. Um, my little knife that I like to use. And ladies and gentlemen, the world's smallest cutting board. Look at that. It was only a dollar. So you get what you pay for, right? All right. So I'm going to put all these ingredients aside and start the cooking process of the ceviche tostadas that we're going to be making today. And let me get this notification off real quick. One, hold please. All right. So I'm going to grab the salt, which is what we're going to start with. Um, as you guys know, I love to use a pink Himalayan salt. Not sure why, but they say it has better nutrients, I guess. I don't know. I'm making that up. Whatever. All right. We're going to get that. We're going to get some garlic salt as well. And we're going to get the pan. That's going to do the actual cooking of the ceviche and the shrimp and the fish. So I'm going to put the fresh ingredients aside. We don't want to contaminate the fresh ingredients since we are not going to be cooking them. You want to be really careful with contaminating raw fish, raw meat, raw chicken with any fresh vegetables that you're going to be using unless you're going to be cooking the veggies. In this case, we're not. So it's pretty much going to be a pico de gallo with a lot of tomato, cucumber that you add, and the fish, shrimp, cooked in the lime and salt. I don't know why I stuttered there, but okay, that's fine. So I can put the plastic on top of here because I'm not gonna be using the stove today. So we're gonna start with this pan and we're gonna start opening up the shrimp. And we wanna drain out all the juice. I did have it in cold ice water overnight so it would uh, thaw out because um, you don't wanna start cooking it frozen. That wouldn't work, so. And guys, this is a really cheap alternative to going out to eat because ceviche, I, I believe a tostada is gonna be what, like seven to 10 bucks each. On um, this one, you're gonna probably make about a dozen for about 25 bucks, if so, because all the ingredients are really fresh and cheap, um, especially here in California, since we do have a lot of farms out here. And guys, I'm, I'm sorry I'm not looking at the comments, but I see pa Paola. Hey, Paola, how are you? Deanna, how are you? 
Hi, Vettel. T say hi to the little ones for me. All right, so what we're doing is we're draining all the juice from the fish and the shrimp that I thawed overnight on, in the fridge. I was going to say online. How do you thaw online? I don't... That sounds like an OnlyFans thing. All right, so we're going to drain this. Add it into here. It's fine. And you do want to take an extra step on drying the fish out. And I know this sounds funny, but the reason why is you don't want it to be too fishy. And after this cooks in the lime juice and the salt that we're going to be using, I'm actually going to drain that juice too. I know it sounds crazy. It's like, Iris, it's ceviche. Like, why are you going to drain all the juice out? Well, I promise you I've done this quite a few times. And if you do drain the juice and do it dry and then drain the lime juice that you cook it in with the salt, it comes out way better and way fresher. All right, so I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna pour the shrimp in here. As you can see, I have about three tilapia. Ooh, that fell, that was loud, sorry guys. I have about three tilapia slices about this big and then 10 ounces of fresh shrimp, it's raw shrimp. But as you are going to see, this is gonna be cooked in the, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's gonna be cooked in the lime juice and the salt that we're gonna be doing right now. You rinse my hands off. And one trick I learned from one of the places that I used to cook at is you get a dry rag, okay? Something that you might wanna throw away, but you don't really wanna dry the fish and the seafood. You wanna dry the plate and that's gonna to continue to dry it. So. I'm gonna dry the plate a little bit. And as the fish and the shrimp move around, what it's doing is still leaving the liquid that we want out of the fish and the shrimp. Because predominantly for ceviche, you want the lime juice solely and not a lot of the fishy smell. I know that sounds crazy because we're making ceviche, but, oh guys, I gotta tell you something. This is coming to an end. I know summer's coming to an end. This is coming to an end of season two of Cooking with Chinchilla. Um, we do have another episode of Street Food with Chinchilla coming out tomorrow night, so stay tuned for that. That's at Dracarys, Dracarys Pizza. Thank you, Armin and Fenya, for having me last week. I don't know if you guys got to tune in last week, but we had a lot of fun, and I actually got to make some homemade pizza last week. And season two has been really full of surprises. Um, you know, I made my mom's favorite Tex-Mex breakfast, so we had breakfast for dinner together. Um, we also went to a Beans and Limes food truck. Uh, we did Dracarys, which is a little golf cart. It's amazing. They also have an Airstream um, that they do catering around here in the LA area. Uh, you know, I've done a lot of crazy things. We even made egg rolls, like Tex-Mex egg rolls on season two here at Cooking with Chinchilla. Um, we made some Greek tacos. And guys, I have some things set up for season three that are going to blow your mind. I mean, things like, I don't know if I'm going to ruin the surprise, but I'm going to go fishing here in LA and maybe cook the fish right there on the lake. I'm going to go crabbing if it's still allowed. I don't think we're in season yet, but um, we're going to be doing a lot of different things this season. Um, but we're going to end season two of Cooking with Chinchilla tonight with ceviche. But you guys stay tuned. I'm going to be jumping into other people's houses and kitchens and kind of, uh, you know, making what they like to make. So season three, just like season two has, is gonna come with a lot of different surprises. So what we're gonna do with the scissors is we're just going to save a lot of time by chopping everything. And just, that one just, that one's still alive. Wow. All right, we're just gonna start cutting the shrimp up into little pieces. It's gonna be a lot faster than chopping it up one by one. Even though we're cutting it one by one, it's still gonna be a lot faster to do this for the ceviche that we're making. And guys, it's still hot outside. So ceviche is still kind of, you know, it's still acceptable, right? Yes, well, today's Labor Day, actually. I saw a lot of people were out on the lake um, at houses, cooking out at their friends' houses, their family's houses. So I decided to do cooking with chinchilla here on Monday night, now that everyone's at home and y'all can learn how to make some shrimp and fish ceviche with me. So we're gonna just chop these up. Probably could be a little faster. And guys, this is a dollar at the dollar store. So you always want some kitchen scissors handy because it's really gonna come in handy, especially with times like this, where you just wanna kinda cut it up really fast. And these are 
uh, medium sized shrimp as you can see and I'm cutting them into about three to four pieces um, which is gonna be a perfect size to cook with the time that we have with uh, cooking with chinchilla here today so I want to know where everyone's watching from uh, Diego catch and cook yes that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing uh, Diego says love it thank you thank you uh, why not use paper towels instead of cloth towels that's a good suggestion mom I you know I should have done that um, I, I feel like the paper towels if they're not like the more expensive brand I feel like there's gonna be soggy pieces of paper that would go into that but that is a good suggestion so we're still cutting up this shrimp and you know what I might just start cutting up some fish too the fish might actually be faster if we didn't cut it so or with the scissors we got to cut it right all right uh, okay Ricky Grant thank you for that message um, we're gonna keep cutting this into this glass bowl I like to use glass especially when making ceviche um, plastic is really gonna soak up the flavor and the lime juice so I feel like glass is gonna be a lot better than using a plastic bowl um, for cooking ceviche so we're gonna use glass instead of plastic so I want to know where you guys are really watching from Yoli thank you for tuning in Paula Ann how are you how was your move to Colorado I saw that you moved from Northern California to Colorado correct and I know we have people watching from Nigeria Alaska Hawaii I love it thank you guys for tuning in last week's cooking with chinchilla was actually the most viewed show that I've had so I really appreciate you guys we hit up to 8,300 people I know it doesn't seem like a lot to a lot of people but if you've been with me since April um, I started with like 100 views and it's just been going up from there so we pre I appreciate everyone that's been tuning in and watching and hopefully you guys are still learning. I know a lot of you are still sending in pictures and videos of the recipes that I've taught you guys. And I really appreciate that because it really makes me happy that my towel fell. It's fine, we have clean floors. It really makes me happy that you guys are learning from Cooking with Chinchilla and still tuning in as of April of this year. As you know, this is coming to an end of season two and don't forget to stay tuned for season three because I am gonna be hitting the streets more and different kitchens and maybe doing some fishing and cooking too, like Diego said here in the comments. All right, so I'm gonna start adding the salt just so the shrimp will start cooking. All right, I got the pink Himalayan salt and I also have, as you can see, it's raw, it's fresh and that's what you want for your ceviche. You're not going to eat it this way, but the cooking process starts right now when I start adding the limes in here. With, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, please, the world's smallest cutting board. It's fine. It's from the dollar store. So, all right. I like to roll my limes before I cut them. The reason why that's going to release a lot of the juices and also help you while you're trying to squeeze it into the ceviche. So I'm going to cut these up. And... Like I always tell you guys, it's always fun for the kids to join you. Don't ever let them cut um, unless you're holding their hand and maybe supervising them, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, Paula Ann said it was a good time, long drive, but good. Yeah, I was Central Cali, three hours from LA. Okay, okay. I'm happy that went good for you. I'm happy you're back in Colorado. I miss the snow. I really do. But I still love living here in LA, even though it was 100 and thousand degrees yesterday or this whole weekend um, but I still love it and pretty soon I'll only be about an hour drive from the snow so all right guys so what we're doing is I have all the cut up shrimp I use about 10 ounces of shrimp for this shrimp and fish ceviche that we're making today and what's happening is the citrus of the lime and the salt added together into the shrimp and the, sh the fish that we're gonna be adding here pretty soon is going to do the cooking process for us that's what makes the freshness of ceviche because you do want to cook you do want to serve it cold which is how ceviche is made um since we are coming to an end of summer i figured that we do some kind of summery dish okay i've only added one lime and i'm going to keep talking because i am going to be adding quite a few limes into the ceviche and guys again this is really cheap guys so if you go to a mexican restaurant and you get a tostada of ceviche it's gonna cost you about seven to ten bucks probably here in LA about fifteen dollars um, 
per tostada, you're gonna make about a dozen tostadas for about $25. So guys, this is a cheap alternative. For me, cooking is fun. I don't know about you. Hopefully I've made it fun for you guys. Um, so I'm gonna keep adding these limes in here. And don't, don't forget guys to share this video. I know a lot of you have friends that love to cook as well or need to learn how to cook. So I would really appreciate it if you share this video. It's a really simple button right down there. And you can also subscribe to my YouTube, which I do put up and upload all my lives. And there will be a new episode of Cooking with Chinchilla, AKA Street Food with Chinchilla, which is my new show um, for Drackery's Pizza on there. And if you're just tuning in, what we are making today is fresh ceviche. It's made with fresh shrimp and tilapia. Right now, I'm adding the lime juice, which I did already add some lime juice and some Himalayan salt in there, some pink Himalayan salt. And the acidity of both, of the, the salt and the limes, is what's gonna be doing the cooking today, which is why we're not gonna turn on the oven or the stove today. So I'm mixing this in, and as you can see, it's been about five minutes and the shrimp is already changing color, which means it's cooking through the acidity. And that's how you make ceviche. So we're gonna start cutting up some more limes. And you wanna kinda get a puddle of lime juice, which is why I got like a dozen limes here. So you guys are gonna watch me cut a lot of limes, but we are gonna save some, not just for the cooking process, but for afterwards. Because what's gonna happen is we are going to drain the juice that it was cooked in initially um, because it's i know it sounds crazy but ceviche you don't want to keep the juice it was cooked in at least for me no um, some of you might like that but i personally don't it comes out very different and it tastes very different so i need some more muscles this, this is one i didn't roll did y'all notice that i didn't roll this one so the juice is being stubborn all right so now that we have a little puddle here and the shrimp is cooking, I'm gonna rinse my hands off, which I'm still gonna get dirty, but I'm gonna get some of the slime off. Use this and start cutting up some tilapia that we're gonna add into the shrimp as well, into the cooking process. So I'm just gonna slice these up and dice it up like you would do like tomatoes. There we go. As you can see, these are just kind of little cubes that I'm using thinly sliced, kind of cubed up like this. The reason why you want that is because it's gonna help with the cooking process. And these are for tostadas. So you don't want a big slab, unless you wanna put this on a tostada, which I don't think you do. Um, but that's why we kind of cube it up here. So I'm gonna keep cubing these up. And so we have Paula Ann from Colorado. We have my mom, Rosalinda from Fort Worth. Uh, Bobby, I know you are in, I didn't mean to do the knife, sorry. I know you're in Vegas. How are you? I saw your, uh, why do I keep doing that? Bobby, what's wrong with me? Uh, I saw your rain video. We are lacking rain here in California, but that was really nice to see that y'all had a rain in Vegas, which I think around this time y'all get quite a bit of rain. I know Jessica, my friend here in North Hollywood. Um, so congratulations on your new baby, you and your, uh, hubby or boyfriend or I'm not sure um, but congratulations on the little baby I know she said that she grew up here in North Hollywood um, which is kind of where I'm at and uh, she said that usually this time of year we get rain but unfortunately California gave us 110 degree weather this weekend which was <clears throat> not fun it's not fun I know a lot of the food trucks that I follow um, online were kind of weary because uh, it was time for them to close this weekend and they had to shut down because it was so hot and if you've never worked on a food truck which i have it is really hot hence the armband when i cook and hence the armband i am doing a giveaway guys so don't forget um i am going to be doing an armband giveaway which is good for cooking because you don't want to touch your face while you're cooking which is a really good alternative so i'm going to be sending a couple people some armbands you can choose your color and all you have to do Step number one is share my video, screenshot it, DM me. Also, you gotta join my mom's page called Home Cooking Recipes. Post anything on there. Post a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Post a toast with butter. Post something that you bought from Jack in a Box or McDonald's or wherever you like to eat. Or if you're eating out, post it in Home Cooking Recipes. Try to give the description of what it is. 
screenshot both the sharing and um, the home cooking recipe share and that you join the, the group and I will send you a giveaway that I'm doing for the end of season two which is season finale today I know guys we are coming to another end of a season but I have some really fun things for season three so stay tuned for that all right so we're gonna keep chopping up the tilapia and I'm not done adding the salt or the lime because as you can see it is cooking and you can see that the the shrimp is actually turning orange which you know is gonna be cooked here and it's only been about seven to ten minutes and that's what the lime and the Himalayan salt is doing it's actually doing the cooking for me um, since this is a fresh dish uh, we don't want to use any heat on this which is why I kept it in ice even to thaw it out overnight in the fridge I kept it in ice cold water so it stayed at a perfect temperature to where it doesn't go bad and actually once fish and seafood starts heating up it starts kind of cooking on its own but with this it's still cold and it hasn't been out very long which is fine and once it's still doing the cooking in the lime juice and the himalayan salt that we have it in we're going to throw it in the fridge as we start cutting up all the fresh veggies that we're going to add into the ceviche that we're making almost done. i probably should have used the scissors on this one too i didn't think about that okay we learn as we go right learn as we go all right we're gonna add this and probably switch over to the scissors so it's a little faster way faster okay there we go and these are scissors guys that you can get at the dollar store these are only a dollar and they come in very handy uh, while you're cooking so just some little tips for you guys watching out there I don't know where you all are watching from I do appreciate you guys tuning in like again i said last week we had about eight thousand viewers so thank you guys for that and don't forget to keep sharing these videos i know a lot of people would love to learn these recipes we've done a lot of different recipes this this season season two which tonight is a season finale of season two but again season three is going to be coming up with a lot of different things where i'm going to be jumping that was so cheesy i'm going to be jumping out of the kitchen um, and hitting the streets and hitting other people's kitchens hitting up some more food trucks some street food um, and it's going to be changing every season so guys thank you again for everybody that has viewed and shared these videos and everybody that has been sending in that you learn you're learning from these recipes you're cooking them for your family your friends i really appreciate it and that's what i'm here for i'm here to teach you guys and we can learn together. As you can see, I used the scissors and that was a lot faster to cook the shrimps or cut the fish. So let's get this shrimp flavor off my hands. And I'm constantly washing my hands, which is really good in the kitchen, especially when you're dealing with raw fish, raw meat, raw chicken, anything else like that. I'm gonna move this out of the way. There's a piece of shrimp in there. <clears throat> And we're gonna add about a couple more limes. As you can see, it's drenched in the juice. And the juice and the salt that I added in here is actually cooking what we're making in, which is the shrimp and fish ceviche. So I'm gonna roll this lime up. It's gonna make it a little easier while I'm squeezing it into the ceviche. There we go. And as we finish adding the limes, we're going to add a little more salt and we're going to top it off with the covering right here. And then we're going to add it into the fridge to keep the temperature of the fish at a cold temperature. Because if it starts getting hot, then it starts getting rotten. Um, and the reason why is when you're cooking ceviche is you want to keep it at a cool temperature. Um, if you're going to cook ceviche or if you're going to cook any seafood, then you want a higher heat temperature. Um, which is going to keep all like the, I don't know, like the germs and stuff. I know I've taken all these food classes, but I, I forget. But if you're going to cook it cold, keep it cold. If you're going to cook it hot, keep it hot at a certain temperature. And that's what we're doing today with the ceviche. Why am I cutting it over here? All right. All right. This is going to be the last one I'm going to add. And we did about 
one, two, three, four, five, six. About six large limes that I bought. And this is gonna be the cooking process of the ceviche that we're making today. I'm gonna to add a little more salt, which I like to use pink Himalayan salt. And if you have been watching both seasons or even just joining us, I am not a big fan of raw onions. So in this case, a lot of people would add this at the end. I'm gonna add it into this mixture because what this mixture is also gonna do is it's gonna cook this red onion and it's not gonna give it that oniony flavor that I don't like. Um, but in this case, because it is cooking in the acidity of the lime and the salt, I'm gonna add some in there. As the cooking process goes in the fridge. So we're gonna slice this up. I'm gonna take this off. Just gonna take the papery kind of chewy part off the outer covering. We can chop this off too. That's not gonna be very good. And we're just gonna thinly slice it. I like to dice it up really, really small because I'm not a fan of onions. And again, guys, if you are chopping, don't forget, this is what's gonna hold your veggies, okay? This is what's gonna guide your fingers so you don't chop your fingers off. And that's how I'm gonna be cutting. Sometimes I don't get it perfect, but be careful while you are cooking um, because I've had a few dozen accidents. And I don't want that to happen to you or anybody else you love that you're cooking with. So, all right, we're just gonna dice these up. I'm not gonna add too much. Me personally don't like a lot of onion, but it just gives it the flavor that it needs and it's gonna still cook as the cooking process is going here with the ceviche. And let's add a little bit more salt. There we go. We're gonna mix this up. It's been about 15 minutes, I believe, and the shrimp is almost cooked. We're gonna try to leave it in the fridge covered in the juice and everything else to continue the cooking process in the lime and the Himalayan salt. But you wanna keep it in the fridge, don't keep it out because you don't want it to get to room temperature because then that's really gonna mess everything up. Alrighty, let's throw this over here that is and I'm gonna to top it off put it in the fridge and continue the cooking process as you can see this is tilapia <clears throat> and fresh shrimp it's drenched in that lime juice and this Himalayan salt so that's what's gonna be cooking in the fridge I know that sounds crazy but that's how ceviche is made hold please and I'm back had to take a little break um, so we're just gonna start chopping up all of the fresh ingredients that we have here again we have cilantro jalapeno Roma tomatoes and you want to get the Roma tomatoes to where they're a little firm you don't want them too soggy because then it's gonna get really pasta saucy I don't know how to say that and cucumbers for a lot of you that don't know when I'm cooking I use my I use the skin of the cucumber and potato only because it gives it more flavors. And one of my friends was a chef, a uh, culinary trained, experienced guy. And he says a lot of the nutrients and vitamins that you're gonna get from the veggies and the potatoes by leaving the skin on um, is going to have a lot more nutrients. It's not gonna be a lot, but it's better than nothing, right? It's better than French fries from McDonald's, which actually sounds really good right now. All right. And what I'm doing right now is I'm going to clean the cutting board because we did cut the raw shrimp and the raw fish on here. And again, guys, you got to be careful because we are not cooking these fresh vegetables and you want to be careful with cross contamination, which is going to make you sick and food poisoning is not fun. All right. So we're going to start with 
the cucumbers. We're gonna rinse these off. I've already rinsed them off, but just to be careful, especially with everything going on right now. And again, I'm gonna keep the skin on because I like the flavor of it. Personally, if you wanna, you know, trim it and cut it off, cut all the skin off and do it that way, my way is this way. Cooking is fun, cooking is your way, so do it however you'd like. I'm just showing you the way I like to do it. So we're gonna cut all the veggies, put them in this glass bowl, add it to the ceviche, mix it up, throw it on a tostada, and have a taste. So we're almost done, guys and gals. I don't know where you guys are watching from. We have Danny, how are you, cousin? Joanne, how are you? It's been forever. Johnny, how are you, cousin? I miss you guys. Hopefully I can make it to Texas soon, which is where I'm from, if you guys don't know. Um, right now I'm in Los Angeles area. I moved out here about a year ago, as of two days ago. So um, it's been nothing but great. And I've been very blessed with the place I live at, the friends that I've made, the experiences I've had, um, you know, so. And again, guys, be careful while you're cutting this. There we go. I'm just gonna cube this up just like we did, just like you would do tomatoes for pico de gallo, however big or small that you'd like. As you can see, regular tomato cucumber, that's kind of how big you guys want it. If you want it smaller, cut it smaller. If you want it bigger, again, this is your kitchen. You're cooking the way you want to do it. All right, so we're gonna keep cutting these up. And we've had the tilapia and the shrimp cooking in the fridge for about four to five minutes. So by the time we cut up all these veggies to add into the ceviche that we're making, you're gonna see that the shrimp is gonna be orange and the fish is going to be very, very white. Um, before you start cooking the raw fish, the tilapia that we use, it looks very, I wanna say pinkish, clearish. Um, but when we do take it out of the fridge after cutting all these up, um, it's going to look very different and you guys are going to be surprised at how easy it is to make ceviche at home. And the toppings that I'm going to be using for my tostadas, again, are the crema mexicana um, and then a guacamole salsa that I bought. I usually make my own, didn't kind of feel like making it this week. Sometimes it's okay to cheat while you're cooking, you know, take a few shortcuts here and there, especially with this dish. Um, this takes a lot of chopping, a lot of you know, tedious work. So I took a little shortcut, which is okay sometimes. All right, we're gonna chop this up. Finally, be careful with your fingers. You might need those. I like mine, so I'm very careful with mine, okay? All right, so we're gonna add this in here. That looks about right. I think I should do about another half. So I'll, about, I'll do about a one and a half cucumbers. I think I'll eat the, the other half with some lime and some salt later on as a snack. So I don't know if you've ever had that with some tajin. Ooh, so good. If you guys don't know what tajin is, let me show you real quick. If I have it, yes. Any leftover, okay. Have you ever seen a stand of fruit here in Los Angeles, California or anywhere that you live? This is the magic. This is tajin. This is what you add on the fruit. I personally like to add fresh fruit, fresh cucumber, um, add some lime or lemon juice and some salt and some tahine. Ooh, so good. And you can actually even add hot sauce on there if you're feeling kind of risky. I don't know how to say it, but you know. It's really good, really good snack. So I'm gonna save this for me for later. It's gonna be maybe a midnight snack for me, so. All right, so we're gonna chop this last half of a cucumber. So I did add about three pieces of tilapia. I did six limes. I did some Himalayan salt. We have one and a half cucumbers. We have 10 ounces of shrimp, which is cooking in the fridge right now. And we're gonna add, I only did about a quarter of a red onion, which it was a pretty big onion too. But as you guys know, I don't like raw onions, so I don't use a lot of it. So we're gonna add this in here. And I will have the recipe in the caption as I do share this video. And don't forget to please share this video for your friends. I know a lot of people would love to learn how to make this. Um, and uh, yeah, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube. It's Cooking with Chinchilla. I do have a new episode of Street Food with Chinchilla, which is my new show. 
And unfortunately, this is the season finale of season two with Cooking with Chinchilla. I know that was a lot to process, but if you go to my YouTube, you'll understand. Hit the subscribe button, and don't forget here to hit the share button. I would really appreciate it. So I'm gonna cut up some jalapenos. Let's clean this off. Okay, we're gonna chop up one jalapeno. I'm gonna cut it into four and then dice it up. You like Again, you can cut it as big or as small as you want. It's your cooking, however you wanna do it. I'm just teaching you the basics of how to make these. I'm gonna do two jalapenos. Watch my fingers, add it into the cucumber. Let's do the last jalapeno, it shouldn't take long. And lastly, the easiest thing to cut is going to be the tomatoes and the cilantro, but don't forget guys, if you're not very big on hot food, these seeds of the jalapeno are what you wanna take out, okay? Um, that's what's gonna give the hotness. Personally, I like it a little bit spicy. Um, it's not gonna be too spicy because these are smaller jalapenos. You can use serrano peppers, habanero peppers, it depends on the hotness that you want, um, but you do kind of wanna squeeze all the seeds out so you don't get that big crunch of a big chunk of jalapeno that would be a surprise i remember the first time my friend had me try wasabi never had sushi had never knew, never even knew what wasabi was i it looked like guacamole to me so he's like do you want to try sushi and it was my friend's little brother and i was like sure and he was like okay cool here's a california roll it's cooked you're gonna like it and um he said "Ooh." Here's a nice sauce that you can add on to it, which is wasabi, and he added a lot of it. It was probably, and when I say a lot, wasabi goes a long way, and it was only like a teaspoon on a little piece of sushi about this big, and he was cracking up for about 30 minutes while I'm over here dying in the kitchen, like trying to drink water because I don't like milk, and uh, yeah, that was my first sushi experience, which now I still love sushi, um, and I guess you can compare sushi to ceviche in a sense um, because ceviche is actually made with raw fish and raw shrimp, but it's not heated to be cooked. It's cooked through the acidity of the lime and the salt that we added a little bit earlier, and it's cooking in the fridge. I know it sounds crazy, but that's what's happening. Um, hi, Manny. How are you? Good to know, Andres. Andres, she's promoting all the mexican brand yes yes andrea yes uh except for that brand that we all forgot about you know the one we're not going to get into that but uh yeah i will never promote that one on my show ever again all right so we're going to chop up some cilantro but this is going to take like two seconds with my little knife let's get a bigger knife for this one All right, let's actually rinse it off first, right? I'm over here promoting healthness and cleanliness and I'm not doing it myself. All right, so let's chop this up. We're gonna get a fine chop into the cilantro. it into the jalapeno and the cucumber and let's get an update together on what's cooking in the fridge So it's been about five to seven minutes, all together about 15 minutes since this has been cooking in the salt and the lime. And as you can see how milky the water is, that's the lime and the salt actually cooking the fish. And this is why we're gonna drain it before we add all the fresh ingredients. Because that milkiness is gonna be the fishiness of the ceviche that you don't want. A lot of people like to keep this in their ceviche. I personally don't. Reason why. And I know, again, it's gonna sound crazy, 
but it gives it too much of a fishy flavor. Let's do it that way. Too much of a fishy flavor, but the acidity of the salt and the lime that we add into this with the actual cooking of the fish and shrimp, it's way too fishy, if that makes sense. So that milky water is what we're gonna be draining. But as you can see, it is turning color and that's when it's cooking, okay? So we're gonna mix this up a little bit. I'm gonna use a spoon, mix it up so I don't get my hands dirty. And it's a little rough right now because it is cold. And you can see the actual shrimp. If you can see here how it is turning orange, that's when you know it's cooking. Crazy, huh? A lot of different methods, a lot of different ways to cook. And this is a cold way of cooking. All right, let's put this back in the fridge, get back to cutting up and finishing up the tomatoes. Once we do this, we're gonna drain this, rinse it off, add a few more limes, and I'm gonna make me a tostada, and hopefully you guys are taking notes. If you're not, it's fine. You can catch me on my YouTube at Cooking with Chinchilla. This live video will be posted and a new episode of Street Food with Chinchilla will be on there. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on YouTube. All right. All right, we are almost done with the veggies. So let's cut up a few Roma tomatoes. And I'm almost, I'm hungry. I don't know about you guys, but all this freshness. All of the freshness, very taxing to me. All right, so we're just, again, like the jalapenos and the cucumbers, we're gonna dice this up. Allison, how are you? I can't wait to be invited to the wedding. Lydia, how are you? De Capito, you remember, you remember. Who else is watching? Uh, Rose Mota, how are you? Thank you for watching. Hi, Manny. Uh, yep, okay. So we're just gonna chop this up. Big or small, again, your kitchen, your meal, you put a spin to it however you'd like. This tomato is actually too soggy, but that's okay. We're still gonna add it in here. We're not gonna use that one. All right, let's get a, let's get a denser one. And again, guys, while you're doing this, you wanna get the more dense, the harder tomatoes, because if you get the soggy ones, like I just try to cut right now, and I don't know why I did the knife like that, while putting the, that was very dangerous. All right, so the harder they are, the easier they're gonna be able to cut and the better they're gonna be for your ceviche. Reason being is they're not gonna be soggy. You don't want a tomato sauce, um, you know, as a base for your ceviche, unless you're making the cocktail, so. All right, let's clean that off. I like to take this little piece off. If you like to keep it, keep it. I take it off personally. All right. Almost done. Ah. Oh, and don't forget in season three, we do have the holidays coming up and we do have cold weather, which I'm excited about. I'm gonna be hitting the streets, doing some fishing, doing some outdoor cooking, um, but I'm also gonna be doing a lot of soup. So guys, let me know what kind of sopas that you want. I know I do wanna make pozole, I wanna make my chicken tortilla soup. Um, and we are finishing off the summer with season two of Cooking with Chinchilla with a fresh summer dish that you can still make through the winter. Um, but it's gonna be fun to be doing some, you know, some sopas for, sopas means soups, if you guys don't know, for the winter. And look how fresh this looks, guys. We have the jalapeno, the cilantro, cucumber, tomato. And this is what we're gonna be adding into the fish and shrimp that we're cooking in the fridge right now. And if you're just tuning in, I know it sounds crazy, but yes, we are cooking in the fridge right now. We're almost done with this. There we go. Let me mix this puppy up. Wash my hands just in case. There we go. I'm gonna just mix all these fresh veggies together. Kind of blend the flavors together. There we go. And look how good that looks. It smells good too. 
And what I'm gonna try to do is also add the lime in here because what lime's gonna do is gonna bring out all the flavors of this fresh medley mix that we have here. So I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and lime and then do a little mixing and then we're gonna add it into the ceviche that's cooking once we drain the juice. Pretty much a pico de gallo with cucumber that you add into the ceviche. There we go. And again, okay, guys, don't forget, I do have some ideas for season three coming up. I'm not sure if I'm going to be starting next week or the week after. Um, I do have to do some kind of setups. And, you know, a lot of the writing that I've been doing for season three has been really different than just sitting in my kitchen the whole time which i haven't been in my kitchen for about a month as you guys know i was at drackery's last week out in sunland california which we had a really fun time actually making some fresh dough from italy which is amazing because um, that's how they make their pizzas and i was very honored to be a part of making a fresh italian pizza and if you guys don't know about drackery's really great great couple Fenya and armin thank you so much for inviting me again um, they allowed me to make a handmade pizza with them. And Armin is actually a dentist who left dentistry uh, to, to open up a, um, a stream, what is it, Airstream. Um, they do catering, which is really great. Y'all can check them out on Facebook or my YouTube. Um, you can find them on there as well. Uh, and they do catering with fresh pizzas. They have a ton of things on their menu that you can get here in LA, which is really fun. So thank you guys for that. Um, but don't forget for season three, um, we are going to be doing a lot of different things and hitting the streets more than just my kitchen. And I might be jumping into your kitchen. If you're in the LA area and want to teach me something that you make for your family, feel free to contact me here on Facebook um, or my YouTube, Cookie with Chinchilla. All right. Oh, that was a good line. All right. So now that we're done chomping all of this up, I'm gonna bring the fish out. We are going to drain the juice, add the veggies, and I'm ready for tostada. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really hungry after doing this. amazing it's been cooking for about 25 minutes with the tilapia the red onion the pink Himalayan salt and the 10 ounces of shrimp that we use and so what we're gonna do now is I'm going to drain the juice add the fresh veggies and I'm ready for a tostada wish we had smell vision because you could probably smell how good it looks there we go. It really Does it? Yeah. And it's all fresh veggies, right? It smells so good. <laughs> it's crazy because my roommate just walked by and said it smells really good. And the crazy part of it is it was actually it was actually cooked cold. This is my roommate, guys, Joe. He hasn't been on any of my shows yet, but hopefully for season three, you can join me. And uh, yeah, the crazy thing is he said it smells really good, so and it was good. actually cooked in the fridge, as crazy as it sounds, but this is how ceviche is made, and you learn something new every day. Don't forget to share this video and join my YouTube at Cooking with Chinchilla to learn some more tricks. See, there. See ya. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna drain the juice. There we go. And as you can see, the juice that we're draining is that milky juice. That's gonna be the fishy flavor that we don't want in the ceviche. Okay, that's the stuff that actually cooked the shrimp, the onion, and the tilapia. We're gonna get rid of this and add some fresh lime, which is gonna make your ceviche taste a lot more fresher than fishier, if that makes sense. There we go, a lot more fresher than fishier. So here we go, we're gonna drain this out. go and you want to get rid of all of it I'm 
out of the sea, but I'm still here, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. We are making some fresh ceviche. There we go. Now that we have all of that juice gone, the cooking process has not stopped completely because there is still some salt and lime in here. We're gonna mix that up a little bit. And since this is a small bowl and this is a small bowl, we're gonna add a bigger bowl and something that I can put in the fridge. Unfortunately, this is a little too small and we are gonna get a plastic container and add all these ingredients together and we're ready to have a tostada. There we go. This is a little bigger. So we're going to add this in here. Try to get all of it out. And again, guys, this is a cheap way of making ceviche. It's the same way you would get it at a restaurant. Just because it's a cheap way doesn't mean it's not as good. This is just gonna be you making it. It's gonna taste the same. It's gonna be a little cheaper than $10 a tostada than you would get at a Mexican restaurant, except you're gonna get about a dozen tostadas for about $25. So you're talking about $2 a tostada versus $10. And the fun part about it is you get to have fun with your family, your friends, your roommates, as y'all guys got to meet my roommate Joe, um, and cook together. So let's add this in here. What we're adding are the cucumber, the cilantro, the tomato, the jalapeno, a little bit of lime juice. We're gonna add all this in together and we have our ceviche, guys. All right. Simple as that, about $25, about a dozen tostadas would usually cost you about 120 without tax. We made it for $25 today. We have our sides, like the tostada, the head of this guacamole salsa. We have the caquic Mexican cream that I like to top my tostadas with. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt. A couple more limes which will continue the cooking process. There we go. And this surprisingly was our stove today. This in the fridge. That's how you make ceviche. Oh, let's get that bundle of seeds out. All right, let's add some more lime in here to continue the cooking process, if it needs it. Don't forget guys, I would really appreciate it if you guys shared this video, subscribe to my YouTube at Cooking with Chinchilla, where we will have some new episodes of Street Food with Chinchilla as of tomorrow, and some more recipes for you guys. This is the season finale of season two, guys. Thank you guys for joining me. We've been here since April. We've gone through two seasons together. Hopefully I've taught you guys quite a bit. And we're gonna mix this up one last time. I'm gonna grab me a plate, have a tostada. And hopefully I get to hear from you guys. I love hearing from you guys, seeing that y'all are sending in pictures of the recipes that I teach you guys. And there we go. For $25, you got about a dozen ceviche tostadas. There we go. Cooked within about 30, 45 minutes. It's fresh, it's at home. You know how it's made now. Hopefully you can share this video. I'm gonna grab me a plate, have a tostada. it off with some crema and some salsa. I would kind of like a, like a bowl. All right. Let's get some of this goodness in here. There we go. And 
minutes you're cooking, you can put as much as you want. I'm gonna add some subtleness in here. Add some salsa in. Some crema, which is how I like it. I'm just gonna drizzle it on here. Looks so good. There we go. Rinse this off. Get a little bit of the guacamole green sauce so that I usually make homemade, but I didn't have time today, so. give it the flavor there we go ladies and gentlemen you just made ceviche at home here with cooking with chinchilla in my home in los angeles california don't forget to subscribe to my youtube at cooking with chinchilla we do have a new episode of street food with chinchilla coming out tomorrow this is a season finale 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 whichever one you want to say of season two thank you guys for joining me i appreciate it and don't forget season three is coming up next week and we're gonna be doing a lot more crazy recipes and things actually outside of my kitchen. So again, here's your ceviche tostada that we all made together. And uh, love you guys. Thank you, stay tuned for season three.